So let's discuss the relationship between confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. Essentially, a confidence interval is when we do not know a population parameter and we are trying to give our best guess at what our expectation would be of that population parameter based on sample statistics. And for hypothesis testing, it is all about being able to test a claim by setting up a hypothesis test where the statistical test will determine whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, which has an equal sign. And then you discuss what that tells you about the claim. So there is a way, as long as the hypothesis test is a two-tailed test, that we can use a confidence interval to verify the result. So our basic assumption is that the data must be quantitative and obtained via a random sample of size n. Step one is to set up the hypothesis test, and as long as it's an equal to and not equal to, we can then calculate the confidence interval. The same parameters hold. If we know this, the population standard deviation, then we will use a z-test statistic. If we do not know the population standard deviation, we only know s, the sample standard deviation, then we will use a t-test statistic. If the hypothesized value for mu falls within the interval, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. However, if the hypothesized value for mu falls outside the calculated interval, then we will reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Let's try one. So let's say we were given, according to a study of US homes that use heating equipment, the mean indoor temperature at night during the winter is 68.3 degrees Fahrenheit. You think this information is incorrect. You randomly select 25 US homes that use heating equipment in the winter and find that the mean indoor temperature at night is 67.2 degrees. From past studies, the population standard deviation is known to be 3.5, and the population is normally distributed. Is there enough evidence to support your claim using an alpha level of 0.05? All right, well, let's break this down. First thing we have to do is we have to set up the hypothesis. Again, if this is a hypothesis test in which we um, do not have a two-tailed test, then we will have to run the hypothesis test out and we will not be able to verify it with a confidence interval. So here I see that we are working with a sample size of 25. So because this is less than 30, we know that the only way that this test will be valid is if we are told this population is from a normally distribution, uh, or we have a data set where we can run a normality test. But luckily for us, we are told that the population is normally distributed. So we are good there for the sample size. Now, what test statistics should we use? Well, we are given the population standard deviation, not just the sample standard deviation. So that means that we qualify to use a Z distribution. And now let's talk about the setup. So we know that we have a null and we have an alternative hypothesis. So we write down our labels. We know that we're in the world of the means. So that means we use the population parameter mu, always a population parameter when setting up a hypothesis statement. And the claim that's being made, it stated that you think the information is incorrect. So that's not giving us a direction. It's not saying that we believe that it's warmer in the homes at night or cooler in the homes at night, which means that we will be hypothesizing that they state the average is 68.3. And we say that that's incorrect. So our claim is going to be labeled on the alternative. Now, instead of writing the hypothesis test, what we want to do is we want to use a confidence interval in order to be able to determine whether we should reject or fail to reject our null. Remember, whatever happens to the null, the, the 
uh, opposite is going to be true about the claim. All right, so moving to our guru here, I'm going to go to analytics, to analysis, and we're going to go to mean inference one population. We'll put our sample mean, which is 67.2, our population standard deviation of 3.5, our sample size of 25. The variable name is indoor temperature. And we are doing a confidence interval, which an alpha level of 0 0.05 for a hypothesis test for the confidence interval. Remember, this is the probability of error occurring. So we don't want to talk about the error. We want to talk about the probability um, well, actually, this isn't the probability, but the likelihood that the population parameter will fall within the, the interval, 95%. Notice that these are complements, so there's 5% more to make 100. We have decided that a Z test statistic has qualified, and we hit our little eyeball. And then what we look for in this confidence interval from 65.8 to 68.5 is, is the 68.3 in this interval, and it is, so we will fail to reject. If we look back up here, tells us that if, whoop, no, here, if our hypothesized mu falls within the interval, we will fail to reject. So our 68.3, it barely fits in there, it's right at the top here, but it is in our interval, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and therefore we would conclude that with a 0 0.05 significance level, we do not believe the claim is correct. Okay, so we do believe that on average it makes sense to be 68.3. And that's how we can use the confidence interval. If we ran the hypothesis test, we should get the same result. So test the hypothesis at a 0 0.05, put a not equal to sign and the hypothesized value of 68.3. Z test statistic, yep and eyeball so we added to it the hypothesis test now we see that we can use our critical values method with the test statistic falling within the fail to reject region or the p-value being 0.11 which is larger than our significance level of 0 0.05 also pointing to failing to reject the null hypothesis so these should align and so confidence intervals can be used to verify a hypothesis test that is two-tailed.